Hey, Michael Rands here with Dozuki. Uh, just wanted to give you a general introduction to the platform here. I'll try to keep it within uh, six or seven minutes here. See if I can do it. Uh, so we'll go over the work instructions, some tools that are built in that um, help with tribal knowledge and, and capturing, cataloging that knowledge. Um, we'll talk about revision control and then really quickly dive into courses, which is our, our training application. So we'll start off here with the um, the introduction. We've got this difficulty, time required, and sections. This is all put in by the author. This isn't something that's automatically sensed. Um, and the steps here obviously are um, dependent on how many steps you have down below. Uh, moving down to the tools. Um, tools and parts, these are live links. So these are connected to other guides as well. Um, so say we've got this 9 16 wrench that uh, say we want to change that to one quarter wrench. We got all new machines, we're doing different things. Um, we can change this guide and we can have the option of updating any guide that has that tool in it. Um, so you don't have to go back through all your paperwork and, and figure out you know, which guides have this tool. It's all connected together. Uh, same with the parts, you can have this link off to, I've seen some people link off to a supplier um, so they can buy more. I've seen them link off to a map in their stock room showing exactly where to find this part. So it's very customizable. You can figure out uh, what works best for your, you know, your workflow there. Uh, moving down into the work instruction itself, you can see it's very simple, just pictures and bullet points here. And um, max of three pictures, max of eight bullet points. And the, the reason for that is it just seems to be, you know, it's not a technical restriction. It's a sort of a philosophical one, I guess, as far as um, breaking things down into pieces that can really be absorbed by the operator and, and not uh, jam too much information into one step. So we figure if it if it needs more than three pictures and it needs more than eight bullet points, it needs to be a new step. Um, so you just pop right in between these pictures and you'll see the, the red arrow here that connects to this red bullet point. Uh, same with the orange circle connects to this orange bullet point here. So really easy to tie back what you're looking at in the picture to um, the action that needs to be taken in the text here. And you'll also notice this um, this special bullet point here. We have a few different ones and these are great for, you know, something that's, you know, really a, needs to be taken particular notice of, something that's a safety issue or, you know, a really crucial step, maybe something that's been, you've had quality issues because people keep missing the step. You can really highlight it, make sure it doesn't get missed. Um, and you can see this is also links off to a rework form. You could link this off to a prerequisite guide. You know, maybe the step says, you know, to take some sort of action that has its own guide, then you can link off to that guide here. So it's pretty easy to uh, to connect these things through hyperlinks. Um, a big feature for capturing tribal knowledge, you'll see here this uh, comment section here. So this is something that is huge for capturing um, suggestions from the operators and also for folks who need to ask questions they can type it in right here and it'll go straight to the author of the guide or they can even at mention an individual like a uh, you know supervisor or something so it's great for the the veteran folks who you know maybe they they spot an error or they see something you know that could be improved and they can jot it down right there without having to interrupt their workflow or maybe it's a new guy who's going through training and he's got a question for a supervisor he can just at mention his supervisor right there and and uh it'll go straight to the to the email you know on their phone in their office wherever they are they'll see it right away um so that's great. I mean, you, uh, a lot of people have, uh, you know, ways of capturing tribal knowledge, like a weekly meeting or, you know, even a meeting at the end of the shift. But there's so much information that gets lost when you're, uh, you know, when you're in the middle of your workflow like that, you just forget it. So having this, as I scroll down here, you'll see we have a comment section after every single step. So they can really jot down those ideas um, without interrupting the workflow at all. So it's great for productivity and it's great for increasing the amount of um, information you're actually capturing from those folks. Uh, I don't have a, an example in this particular guide here, but we can have a video here instead of three pictures. Um, sometimes it's just better to, uh, if it's a complicated procedure or maybe it's you know a new person who's training. What I've seen a lot of people do is have a, a guide that's entirely videos and then they'll just basically copy and paste that guide and add pictures instead. And they'll use <clears throat> the one with videos for training and the one with pictures for um, for reference down on the floor. So the text is very familiar, but the, you know, that they don't have to sit through the video every time. So that's it for the work instructions. Um, pretty straightforward, simple, easy to read, easy to create. Uh, let's go into version control here. So if I go into the history of this document, I can see everything that's ever been done to it, going all the way back to our um, 1.0 here in 2018. 
Um, and I can see, you know, the time, the author, the date, everything that was changed. I can even, you know, jump in here a little deeper and see what exactly was changed. Um, that's a pretty uneventful one there. Uh, but this is all done automatically. This isn't something that you're putting in with data capture. This is just the solution itself tracking your clicks and seeing what you're doing. And there are areas for you to make notes on, on details and changes. But um, even if you didn't make a single note or do anything you know, creative, this, all this information would still be captured automatically. So let's go back to our document here. And you can see, since I'm an admin here, I can see all these old versions. Um, of course, your operator's on the floor your read-only level folks would only be able to see the most up-to-date version. Uh, let's jump into the editing environment very quickly, and we'll just take a look at how easy it is to put this stuff together. Um, this is the text. You can make revisions or you know, add, uh, add steps. Um, you can add entire steps here. I could click this plus button and, and create a whole new step, but um, I don't want to mess up uh, my, my colleagues guide here. Um, and then this is data capture. So you see text inputs, numerical inputs, all this stuff is just drag and drop, and we can start collecting this information. Um, so that's the uh, the editing. You can see, <clears throat> excuse me, the approval processes are built in right here as well. So you put together individuals or teams to sign off on these documents right now. For our major releases, we have the quality department signing off for this particular guide. And then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, We'll go back to our uh, our guide here, and we'll talk a little bit about courses. This is our training situation here. So let's go to our courses here. So these are all um, groups of guides that are put together into training courses, and they can be assigned to individuals. They can be assigned to teams. Um, let's go into machinist level one here. So this is our machinist level one training. They need to train on these three machines, uh, whips, CNC and uh, the roll form machine. And we can see right off the bat that we are not fully up to date on training on any of these, um, but our whips machine is especially bad. So let's dive in and see what's going on there. And you can see, by the way, um, that whips machine oops, was um, the reason it's probably so out of date is it's a, a uh, cyclical training. It expires every six months and needs to be redone, whereas these do not, these are, never expire. Um, so that's probably why we're not doing so high here. They probably did train and, and then expired, and now it's time to go back in and train again. Um, so let's check it out. Jan, I can already tell you're looking good, 100%. Um, Eric is at 33%. Let's see what's going on here. So um, he still needs to do his whips and roll from training. He's good on the CNC. And he can see the same as I can. So when he signs in for the day, he's going to see that he has out-of-date training. And um, you know, of course, your supervisors will keep up on this stuff, but it's it's really possible um, for the, the uh, employees themselves to cover their training entirely themselves because they have visibility into everything that's expected of them here. I can dive into my quality manager team here and see you know, who's, uh, looks like Sarah's the only one that's 100% complete. So this gives you great visibility into not only who's trained on what, but it also allows you to put together backup teams. You know, if somebody gets sick or something like that, you can have uh, teams that are trained in secondary procedures so they can jump in uh, if somebody gets hurt. Um, so that's pretty much it, obviously, very high level. Um, but uh, if you're seeing this video, it's because I, I email it to you. So shoot me an email back if you want some more information, and uh, we'll chat some more. All right, thanks guys, take care.